Well hello there and welcome to this video where I'm going to be taking you on a journey through war dance. So that's number 19 from Kabalaski's 30 Children's Pieces. What you've just heard there is the opening A section from the piece. So before I move on any further, I'm just going to summarise what it is I'm going to be doing in this video. So I'm going to be taking you on this journey of through musical concepts and pianistic skills that are found in this piece. Uh, we're going to be starting with tempo and mood, moving on to form and structure. I'm going to spend quite a, a wee bit of time in this area. Um, then looking quickly at dynamic contrasts, moving on to the rhythm ingredients, um, and then finishing off with cadences and the concept of ledger lines. So hey, let's get started. First up is tempo and mood, and it's marked Allegro in Ergico. Um, Allegro, obviously quick and lively, in Ergico, that just means with energy, with vigour, um, and I also find somewhere it was referring to what the, the, the actual wording there was strong articulation. And uh, it ties in quite nicely with this point that I'm about to make because um, when you compare the, the Shermer edition with the Boozy and Hawks edition, um, the quavers in the Shermer edition are marked staccato. They're not in the Boozy and Hawks edition. Uh, the Boozy and Hawks edition is the edition of that I have been using. Uh, and you will, as you hear me play um, in this video, you'll see that I have chosen to play the quavers uh, staccato. The reason I do feel that, again, this word in erdico, um, I, th I think it kind of really, for me, it just brings the energy to, um, to the piece. So, to staccato or not to staccato, <laughs> That's the question, it's up to you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to play the first couple of phrases. First of all, legato, the quaver's legato, and then I'm gonna be playing the quaver's staccato. So have a listen, see what you think. I did go with the, um, as you'll hear when I play later, I did go with um, the quavers being marked staccato. Um, so I'm going to now play the first part of the B section. Again, initially the quavers legato and then staccato. So um, again, have a listen and see what you think. <laughs> move on to um, my second point which is form and structure I just finally want uh, to say again another difference between the Shermer and the Boosie and Hawks editions um, in the Shermer edition there is a metronome marking um, of about 146 crotchet beats per minute is the suggestion don't think I'm playing it just as fast as that um, whereas in the Boosie and Hawks edition there isn't any metronome marking suggested so let's move on and next up is form and structure. Now war dance is in ternary form, uh, it's got a coda as well and you'll see here that I have used illustrations to provide almost like a snapshot overview. So individually I'm going to be playing each of these sections you can either follow with your, your copy of the score, or if you like, you can just listen because I'm going to be identifying little things that you can listen out for. So 
We've got the A section, bars 1 to 8, then the B section, bars 9 to 14, back to the A section and you'll notice that um, it's four bars shorter um, than the original A section and then we go into an eight bar coda. So in just a second I'm going to be playing the A section for you. Notice that there are two unaccompanied melodic phrases uh, at the beginning. Both are identical but here's the thing. They end with different perfect cadences. So at the end of phrase one, um, it's punctuated by, um, by this perfect cadence in F minor. And then we hear exactly the same melodic phrase all over again. But this time, we've got a perfect cadence in C major. Then we've got another two phrases that use uh, an, an imitative idea and where you've got the, the last part of those phrases descend in sixths. So here it is, have a listen. Okay, so moving on now to the B section. I'd like you to listen out for the tenths. You'll hear that the first two phrases are repeated. And then we've got this scale like ID, which brings us back to the A section again. You'll notice as well that in contrast to the A section, it's played quietly. <laughs> So that's the B section. Now into the A section again, so bars 15 to 18. Here I'd like you to listen um, to the melody because the original melody is ever so slightly different. Uh, so see if you can spot either in your score or just by listening um, the, the difference. The other thing is there is a change in texture. So um, whereas in the first couple of bars, the melody um, was just a, a single um, right hand melody. We've now got the left hand in there, so it's creating, uh, we've got more tenths. And again, it's only lasting four bars. So have a listen. <laughs> into the coda. Now I've got to say I love this coda because the texture it completely changes. Um, so you've got this bass line um, bouncing back and forth from um, the tonic and the dominant, the C and the F and it reminds me a little bit of those pieces that you would get um, kind of in beginner books where there may be the pieces may be called totem pole. Um, so listen out for that bass line. Um, and again, it uses C2 and F1. So if you like, the, the we're really low down on the piano. Um, and it gives this really fantastic effect, almost like um, those kind of war dance, the drums and stuff. So have a listen for that. We've also got a suspended tonic note, again held with the left hand. And then in the right hand, we've got four short melodic phrases in thirds. Um, rhythmically, the phrases are exactly the same. Um, and then to finish off, we've got this ascending, descending scale shape. And I love the ending where you have this F minor, so the tonic triad played really quietly. So here it is, have a listen and watch out or listen out for those features that I've just highlighted. the 
mention this only really, really briefly. Um, the reason being, it does link into what we've just been talking about with um, regards to the form and the structure. You will notice that the A section is loud, B section is quiet, back to a loud A section, and then the coda, generally speaking, is, is quiet. I know there's a, um, a sudden forced accent there, um, but that's just an overview of the dynamic contrasts within the piece. Moving on then to rhythm concepts. What we have here are um, the main rhythm ingredients within war dance. It's in 4-4. Four, four. And the top two rhythms that you can see there are the predominant featured rhythms. It's not to say those are exclusively the rhythm concepts within this piece. Um, you will notice that, for example, in the coda, we've got the quiver and dotted crotch the other way around. So you'll see there at the bottom, I have that rhythm of a crotchet followed by a quiver. So one and two. I would say it's a different concept when you reverse it. So you've got one, two, So that could be considered another rhythm element. And at the very end of this video, I'm gonna be pointing you to a resource that you can print off for your pupils. And again, where I think it's something like I have given them, um, nine different um, boxes that they can then fill in the, the rhythm ingredients with. So another rhythm ingredient could be uh, instead of the quaver and two semi-quavers, you will see that within the piece, again, I think it's in the coda, there's a quaver rest followed by two semi-quavers. So again, that can be considered another different um, rhythm ingredient. Okay, next up, it's a quick listening exercise. So if you've got a score in front of you, I don't want you to look at it. Um, I want you to grab a pen and a piece of paper. And I'm gonna be playing bars nine to 12, which feature just these two rhythms. And I then want you to write out the rhythm. You might want to listen to it a couple of times. Have a listen. <laughs> Okay, so you had four bars of 4-4 four, four, featuring just those two rhythm concepts and this is what you should have. Okay, so moving on then to cadences. We have, and I've mentioned this earlier on when I was dealing with the form and structure of the piece, we have a perfect cadence at the end of phrase one, and then we have another perfect cadence at the end of phrase two. So this is within the, the first um, A section, which is occurring um, between bars one and four. And again, what makes that really interesting is we hear the same melodic phrase, but I love what Kabalewski does. Um, and uses the F minor perfect cadence at the end of phrase one, and then uses a perfect cadence in C major at the end of phrase number two. When we then come back to, um, so following the B section, um, back to the A section at bars 15 to 18, we've got another perfect cadence um, in F minor. And then 
we've got another one in F minor as well. So again, I would be encouraging people just to look at the differences um, and the similarities between those sections. And you'll notice as well that when um, we're at bars 15 to 18, the, the, the melodic passage, the, the melody changes ever so slightly. Um, and I think that's worth pointing out to pupils because the difference is so small, you can so easily miss it. And finally, ledger lines. In the coda, we've got lots and lots of these notes. So C2 and F1. Uh, and again, just to explain why I'm referring to C2, it's the second lowest C in the piano. F1, it's the lowest F on the piano. And that particular feature, um, I think, I reckon Kabbaleski has done it to imitate almost like um, a rhythm that could be played out on uh, on drums. Again, thinking back to that, that totem pole. Um, and the final thing I want to draw your attention to in this video is this. So in the January Curiosity Box under Workbooks and Resources, you will find this pupil workbook. So um, it's again something that you can print out for your pupils and it gets them thinking a little bit more about form and structure, rhythm ingredients and ledger lines. So that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.